Hey guys, welcome back to another Shep Talk review. This time I'm bringing you the ninth Quentin Tarantino film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But as always, before we get into this review, a couple of admin notes to throw at you. If you like what you see here, remember to like, share, and subscribe to this page. It does help me out greatly, and I appreciate anything you can do for or can, anything you can do to help me out. Second, I am currently doing a new giveaway. The details will be at the end of this video, so make sure you stay tuned and find out how you can be entered to win. Quick synopsis. A once famous Western actor, Rick Dalton, and his trusty friend slash stunt double, Cliff Booth, are trying to come to terms with not being the top dogs in Hollywood anymore. First off, I don't know if it was me or if anybody else noticed this, but it seemed after the trailer came out, there was a lot of hype in Hollywood about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but after that, I never got to see I never saw a trailer in the theaters, or at least if I did, it was very few and far between. And I didn't really see a lot of other media hype about this movie. And sorry if you can hear Cotton in the background, he's having one of his days out <laughs> in the hallway. But I don't know if it, I'm just, it just something that popped into my mind when I was watching this movie. Was like, or when I actually got the screening tickets, I was like, oh yeah, that's right, Quentin Tarantino's movie is coming out. When is that again? And realized, oh heck, it's this week. <laughs> It just, it just surprised me. I was like, I just really didn't get that, you know, that media buzz that some of the other movies out there got. All right, let's talk about Leonardo DiCaprio. He plays Rick Dalton in this movie, and who's the down and out Western star that he's no longer in his heyday anymore. And really, he's he's being brought on board films and even movies or television shows to, you know boost up the career of the latest and greatest action star or movie star coming out. And he's coming to terms with that. He's really trying to grasp what it means and how he can change his life course kind of thing. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio does a phenomenal job in this movie. I know we probably say that almost all the time with Leonardo DiCaprio movies, especially recently, but we, I could watch some of his scenes over and over again. He just does a phenomenal job you know, showing us that emotion. There's one scene in particular where he's giving it his all and at the end of it, people are just cheering because, you know, they see what this veteran actor is doing on screen and it's just great. There's also other scenes that we see where he's, you know, he flubs a line and then all of a sudden he's beating himself up and he's like, you can do better than this. You are better than this. We need to show these guys what a great actor is. Again, it just, it's such a, a, Leonardo DiCaprio does just such a great job. Um, again, I think he's one of probably the best parts of this movie. And then we get Brad Pitt's role as Cliff Booth. He plays uh, Rick Dalton's stunt double, but now mostly working as his driver slash friend, you know, in this movie. And as we don't get, we get at some scenes, and I think actually Cliff has some of the best scenes in this movie. But some of his storyline, I think... <sighs> Quentin Tarantino seems to take his time getting us to where he wants to go with some of his storylines. And that's the way I see it with Cliff. Brad Pitt, again, does a phenomenal job with what he's given with, with Cliff Booth, who's playing that stunt double that's really not a stunt double anymore. He's pretty much that friend, entourage character that we see nowadays in Hollywood. And he's trying to figure out where he's gonna go in life. And some of his storyline is a little out there, but again, he probably, no, I won't say probably, he does have the best scene in this movie. And when you go and watch this movie, you will see what I'm talking about and then we can talk about it in the comments below. Margot Robbie plays Shan uh, Shannon Tate in this movie. And before I get into anything else, I think Margot Robbie does a fantastic job in this movie as well. But I just don't think, oops, the story was fine, really did well for her. I think the first hour alone, she probably had maybe one line, if that. Um, and then the rest, like the hour and a half left of the movie, I think she maybe had at most 40 lines in this movie. So she does well with what she's given. But I also say that her storyline is also probably one of the weakest. I think you could have either trimmed some of that storyline or even cut out her storyline and you really wouldn't have missed much in this movie with her. And it's sad to say she did great with what she was given, but really, except for some of the outlying effects with Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth, I don't think 
it, her storyline made much of an impact on this movie. I'm sure some people of you will disagree with me on that one. Just like almost any Quentin Tarantino movie, this movie has a ton of cameos and a ton of side character story arcs. And it, it's really, you can really see it. But what I want to talk about is the Bruce Lee character in this. I'm not going to try to give any spoilers away. But Bruce Lee in this movie, I think, is used more for a comedic moment, a comedic scene. And it kind of downplays or disparages Bruce Lee and all that he did. And I think he could have been written better or had a better, you know, scene. Overall, in the movie, it was fine. It, it worked. It was people, we did laugh at the scene. But when I was walking out of the movie theater, I was like, man, it seems a little bit off in just my opinion. So I don't know if you see the movie, let me know what you think. I know, I think one of the sh movies or one of the reviews I was reading before about previous Quentin Tarantino movies, it seemed like Quentin Tarantino had a foot fetish that he'd track, you know, people walking and stuff like that. And in this movie, I think he graduated and I'm gonna have to tell my friend about this graduation that he did. Because whenever we go anywhere, she likes taking pictures of people's butts. And Quentin Tarantino's kind of graduated to um, doing tracking shots of her, or bringing in shots with people's butts. So you'll see like the camera's focused down here on the person's butt and then he brings the scene in. Um, I don't know why, you know, I guess because there's pl pretty, of pl pretty young women in this movie and it gives them a, you know, a great view to show. I just thought of, I'd bring it up because it's something that stood out with me and I don't think other reviewers are going to talk about. And I'm sure, you know, they're going to say because it's kind of based on a Western slash 1960s movie era kind of thing, that's what Quentin Tarantino was going to go for. I don't know. I just thought it was interesting that every so often you will see an establishing shot with this young girl's booty just sitting right there. Okay, now to talk about one of the things I think is one of the downsides of this movie, this movie is two hours and 45 minutes long. And I think one of the reasons why this movie is so long is because Quentin Tarantino is giving us a kind of day in the life of Hollywood, of especially Rick Dalton really being the primary of this movie. And for a while, the plot just, we don't know where the plot's going. It just seems to wander. We're just, I know when I was sitting through and I think I looked at my watch and it was like two hours into the movie, I was like, how is, Quentin Tarantino going to wrap this movie up. It doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. It doesn't seem like there's going to be a definitive conclusion to this movie. And then at one point, narration comes on and it seems like, oh, okay, I guess Quentin Tarantino is going to wrap this up. It looked like it was the perfect area for him to wrap this movie up with. But then we got 30 more minutes of, of the movie. And that wasn't bad because probably the best scene in the movie was in the last 30 minutes. But it didn't need to be there. There is enough there's certain storylines and certain scenes that Quentin Tarantino could have cut and it would have given us um a good movie a great movie you know but he lasts it two hours and 45 minutes it just feels like two hours and 45 minutes and it, I think it could have been shorter and still been given us the movie that uh, Quentin Tarantino planned another issue I think with this movie is that and I won't say issue but one of the problems that he has with this movie is that he this is an ode to the 1960s. And I think Quentin Tarantino kind of tried to put as much 1960s as he could put in this movie. There is literally a scene where every fast food joint in California in the 1960s is turning on their neon lights. You really didn't need that. By that time, we knew this movie was in the 1960s. Hell, they give us the, you know, the date time stamp at the bottom of the, the screen at certain scenes. If you would have taken some of that stuff out or not even just tried to highlight it as much or just made it part of the background, I think we would have had a shorter movie and still had a good movie. Now, that being said, um, Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I give it three out of five Sheps. It's a good movie, but it's not the best Quentin Tarantino movie out there. And I do recommend seeing it in theaters just because I think just the way it's shot deserves to be seen in the movie theaters. Hey guys, I just had um, my battery on my camera die out on me. I need to buy some extra battery packs. Um, so, as I was saying, thank you for staying to the end of this video. I am currently doing a giveaway. So, there's three things you need to do to be entered to win. First one, um, be a subscriber to this channel. It helps me out greatly. Um, but I need you to turn it, if you have your settings set to 
private, I need you to set them to public so that way I can verify that you're actually a subscriber to my channel. I will put all that information down below on how to set your uh, YouTube subscription policy to public. Second, share this video. It helps me get the word out, you know, it just, it helps me spread the word and actually grow my channel and it's greatly appreciated. Third, comment down below. Tell me what your favorite Quentin Tarantino movie is. Um, and then guys, thank you again. Have a great day and I'll see you at the next review.